Now, I will say this, though. Uh, I am all for some radical change in criminal justice, um, which might very well be abolishing the police. I am totally open to talking about that. However, I do think the issue has been totally misframed as simply a race issue. And this actually causes me uh, rage. I mean, rage, because there are right now as we speak, half a million white people in cages in this country. And last year, 19 white people unarmed were shot to death by the police, um, compared to nine people who were black, who were unarmed and shot by the police. Now I know it's disproportionate, but still nonetheless, it is clearly not a system designed with the sole purpose of hurting black people. That is an incredible amount of collateral damage on your own side that you're willing to take if the mission is simply a racist one. Mm. Slavery, there was not a single white person enslaved. Segregation, there was not a single white person who was denied access to a swimming pool. Now we have roughly you know, close to half of the people who have been murdered or caged or in, and enslaved in prisons over the last 40 years of the drug on, war on drugs and war on crime were white. I mean, and so, and there is no talk about it. And, you know, the guy who was shot to death by that fucking cop with a rifle while he was crawling on his hands and knees in that hotel room in Mesa, yeah. Yeah. you know, and Duncan Lemp who was beaten to death by cops for nothing except for being a homeless guy. And I can go on and on and on. There was a, there was a, 16 year old blonde haired blue eyed kid who was pulling out of his driveway in Overland Park, Kansas, middle class uh, residential area. And the cops put, I think, 19 bullets in him because he was, they were told that he was suicidal. And that's how you deal with a suicidal person, apparently, as they're, as they're backing their minivan. It was a minivan towards you. This stuff is like as grotesque as anything that's ever been done to any black person by cops in this country. Um, and it happens all the time and maybe not as proportion it's not proportionally equal but in absolute numbers it doesn't matter because we incarcerate as more people than the russians and the iranians do <laughs> white i'm sorry we incarcerate more white people than russians incarcerate russian people in china right right and blm couldn't give a shit as far as i can tell i have not no one can give a shit no one talks about these people except the weirdo libertarians i hang out with that's to me, the real problem, that, that is there will not be, I think, a really solid, really meaningful movement that will make the kind of change I want until it is truly trans or post or non-racial in that way. It's a question of the state versus all of us, not to me a question of racist white cops who might be killing black people. It's so fruitless, I think, first of all, to look for the racism in cops as the, as the solution. Uh, it's got to be structural. It's got to be about the law. The reason cops do what they do is because they think they're following the law, and they often are. They're often, the guy, you know, I don't know if you know about this, the Walter Scott case in South Carolina, the most egregious one ever, where he was shot in the back running away from the cop. Do you know that he did ter exactly what he was supposed to do according to mm -hmm. regulations and the code in the police force in South Carolina? Um, and that didn't come out until two years later, but so that's a change in the law. That's not like figuring out whether that cop was racist or not. That's about let's figure out why a cop is obligated to shoot someone running away from him if they think he has a taser. So I don't know. Have, do you, does that resonate with yeah. you at all? I mean, I guess, you know, like the girl in the taco commercial, I'd say, why not both? You know, uh, I, 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 sure. I think that, I mean, I, I think that, um, mm. I, I, I think that I do have to insist that, the system as a whole, the criminal justice system as a whole, is systematically racist. Hmm. I think the numbers behind that are very strong, considering the disproportionality of what happens. I think this, the the drug war plays a huge part in what you're talking about, because the drug war is even more disproportionately um, uh, set against people of color. Mm -hmm. um, but the the system, while racist, is not only racist. Um, the, the system is, I think, brutal and murderous and uh, and vindictive for everyone. I have said in the past that it would be cool if people could draw a connection between, like, Ruby Ridge, for example. Thank you. And the current criminal justice net, uh, um, movement, in part because 
the guy at the center of the Ruby Ridge fiasco was himself not a good dude. He was right. part of a uh, of a avowedly white supremacist militia group. Sure, but the fact of the matter is is that he and his son were out hunting. Uh, the uh, ATF showed up in camo with assault rifles, immediately shot and killed the family dog. When the kid shot back to, uh, in self-defense, they murdered the 14-year-old son. The guy runs into his house. Uh, as the door is open and he's running through a house, a sniper shoots and kills his wife, who was holding their infant child at the time. Right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, 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 I think that we have to be able to and willing to recognize these commonalities, even when we're, the, the victim is not someone that we particularly care to hang out with. Right. Well, that go- that by the way, that goes. I'm sure for many, many, many black people have been shot by the cops too. Not nice people, probably. <laughs> right. There's, there's, and that's just one of the <laughs> things that, like, people. I, I get why it's so important. I, I get why people are enraged by the tendency to say he was no, he was no angel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, about someone who has been murdered by the police, and they're right to say the fact that he is no angel is irrelevant. Irrelevant is totally irrelevant. Irrelevant. That's right. Right. Um, but, uh, I, it does, I, I do sometimes think the hagiography of the people, individual people, um, it sometimes misses the point because it reinforces the idea. If, if you keep talking about how pure the person who was murdered is, that reinforces the idea that someone else might deserve it then if they're not, not as good of a person. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that there are, that those, that those resonances are there and those, there are lessons to be taken. I think the, the Waco incident is another incident in which, um, ATF again, I believe, yep. um, in which, uh, you know, the, the, we can demonstrate that, uh, the system is operating on several different levers. And one of those levers is undoubtedly race, but other levers are just, People who are who sort of in one for one way or another live outside of what is considered the norm of American society, yeah. and they might be members of what was a cult, right? The Waco Branch Davidians were a cult, you know. Yep. Um, uh, but that doesn't mean that you shoot at some of them and light a bunch of them on fire, um, just like the guy at Ruby Ridge. Yeah, he sawed off a shotgun and sold it, so they came after him. That's is right. that enough reason to murder a family? You know. That's right. But I think that those, that those resonances are there. Yeah. And I, I wish that we were in a better position to be able to say, um, you know, hey, look, you should pay attention to this, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that at present, the, the present moment, there is a way to say, hey, we need to get more white people into the discussion that is going to be uh, productive with where the conversation is at right now. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to imagine a vo- vocabulary that I would have to be able to say, Hey, you know, white people matter too, because that's going to, you know, because uh, that's how it's going to be taken as a, as a, you know, all lives matters, you know, sort of bullshit right. um, deflection rather than let's look at the resonances that uh, affect everybody in society and the way in which the criminal justice system is brutal, even beyond its racism. Yeah, but how do we get that movement? I want that movement. I want, I want to have the relatives and friends of some of those 500,000 people in prison and some of the people who have been shot to death by police for no good reason who are white to rise up with BLM in the streets and fight the cops and to go to and to, and to lobby relentlessly for changes in laws. I mean, how do we get that? Well, I think it could perhaps be an ancillary benefit of having another conversation that is related to this that I think we have to have, which is, okay. you know, I wrote a piece about this. Um, People who are fighting for criminal justice reform, as they should, have to stop being naive about who is in prison. In other words, you talk to people about criminal justice reform, and they always want to talk about nonviolent drug offenders. Well, I certainly think nonviolent drug offenders should be freed. Mm-hmm. But the best, the best data I saw said that nonviolent drug offenders make up 4% of state prison populations. It's so small. Yeah, it's, it's relatively big, small. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a bigger percentage of the federal prison system, but like first time nonviolent uh, drug offenders are like 4% of the, of the state prison mm-hmm. population. Yeah. Yeah. And in order to really free people at the scale that we want to, we have to be ready to free people who are guilty of assault, mm-hmm. of sexual assault, which is a 
particularly thorny question of, wow. you know, potentially of murder. I mean, if you're talking about the, getting the numbers that we want out, if we want to tr drastically drop that number, oh, yeah. there's a lot of people who have been uh, convicted of doing really bad things who are going to have to be freed. And, and, and until and unless you are willing to like really own that and talk about, you know, a, this is, you know, uh, a population of people, we're fighting for a population of people, many of whom are not good people. But what we, we so believe in this cause and we so believe in the incredibly unhealthy uh, system that we have now that uh, we have to get real about there are people who are going to be released that uh, you might not necessarily want on the street anymore.